name of God, who is Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And so, beloved, we pray as we gather in this Lenten season. We are reminded that we are urged to keep a holy Lent by means of self-examination and repentance, enabled by prayer, fasting and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. And so let us come to the Lord, who is full of compassion and acknowledge our sins in penitence and faith as we kneel before our Lord and Maker. We pray together. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned through our own fault in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins, and set you free from them, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so we pray, God of suffering and glory, in Jesus Christ you reveal the way of life. Inscribe your law on our hearts that we may not stray from you, but remain your faithful people through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now listen to the reading. Wendell. While Eddie gets the Bible for me, we read from Psalm 51. Or we're not easier, a moment of stage fright. in the song. Let's listen here. And I will read the rest. Thank you. Can I just read the first? Just read it. We now read Psalm 51 and will be led by Wendell. I read the first verse, right? Eh? All through. The, okay. Thank you. Very much. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. 
For behold, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge for me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. The reading is from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31, beginning at the 31st verse. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant for the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. A covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel under those days. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to one another, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Hear the word of the Lord. We now listen to the gradual hymn, All Who Seek for Sure Relief. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip who was from Bethsaida in Galilee and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it 
for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said it was thunder. Others said, an angel spoke to him. Jesus answered, the voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was about to die. This is the Gospel of Christ. Congregation, would you please be seated for the sermon? No matter what the cost. 
She gives us a very evocative image when scrutinizing the path of a grain of wheat that cannot grow unless it dies. And she says this, for the seed to do what it was meant to do, it has to be given up. It has to fall into the earth and be buried. It has to sit down there in the dark until its hour comes, when it will swell, crack, and hatch new life. A green shoot that will climb towards the sun until it breaks through, becoming a golden stalk of wheat that bears much fruit. If you dig around its roots looking for the seed, you won't find it anymore. It is dead and gone. It gives up its life so that there could be more wheat in the world. And so, beloved, as we tend as communities of faith to focus on the harvest, on the golden field and less so on the nature of laboring in the fields of God, Jesus says, Barbara Brown Taylor, redefines the nature of salvific suffering. And she says, it was no longer something to be avoided at all cost. Nor did it mean that God was mad at you. It might in fact mean that God loved you very much. Because when someone on a path towards God deliberately chooses the self-offering that goes with that path, their suffering becomes one of God's most powerful tools for transformation. It is our God breaks open hard hearts so that they may be made new. It is our God cracks open closed lives so that they can get some air into them again. End of quote. We are grappling with the suffering imposed on humanity by the corona pandemic. I don't think that in South Africa we have fully grasped the extent of the impact of 50,000 deaths on our psyche and on the way we perceive and experience reality. Last year, as the extensive presence of the virus and its impact on civilization started to take effect, the novelist Arundhati Roy focused our hearts on the possibilities that was opening to us. She says in a piece, the pandemic is a portal. She calls us to consider the following. And even while the virus proliferates, who could not be thrilled by the swell of birdsong in cities? Peacocks dancing at traffic crossings and the silence in the skies. She notes that historically, pandemics have forced humans to break with the past and imagine their world anew. This one, she says, is no different. It is a portal, a gateway between one world and the next. We can choose to walk through it, dragging the carcasses of our prejudice and hatred, our avarice, our data banks and dead ideas, our dead rivers and smoky skies behind us, or we can walk through lightly with little luggage ready to imagine another world and be ready to fight for it. And so the challenge for us on this given day is that of imagining newness, personally or as a commonwealth of communities. It kindles our commitment to the impossible as we consider the most beautiful seed of transformation our God blessed divine selves. We have choices to make as we seek to believe and to love for each other for and out of God's sake. Amen.
We affirm our faith as we say the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us all and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end and we believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord the giver of life who proceedeth from the Father and the Son who were the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And we believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. And on this day, when we are, as South Africans, especially mindful of Human Rights Day, knowing that it was this day in Sharpeville in 1961 where the seed was sown for the hopeful flowering of the freedom tree. And even as we thank God for this day, we are reminded of how human rights, fundamentally so, continue to be violated here in our land, globally in places like Myanmar, in Sri Lanka, and even as we speak, there is some awful atrocity that is taking place. And so we pray for the right to life, particularly of the unborn and the elderly. We pray that people may realize the worth of God's creation in the form of life and respect it with due respect and dignity. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the rights of women who suffer violence and oppression even within their own families. We remember the women we work with and are facing domestic violence in and outside their homes, that the importance of women may be realized and her worth recognized in the family. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the rights of those who are victims of human trafficking and modern forms of slavery. We pray that the Spirit of God rest on those involved and that they may realize the cruel act that they are involved in of destroying the lives of children, young girls and women. May they also realize the significance of the God-given gift of life. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the right to food and water, one of our most basic needs. And we pray that we will all sincerely recognize and acknowledge that we have to preserve and save both food and water 
so that all may be able to fulfill their basic needs and live a dignified life, which is everyone's right. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the doctors who make their profession a business and give less importance to the cure of the human body. And today also, Lord, we thank you for the doctors and nurses and all those in the front line of medical care and ministry. We thank you for the way they have embraced and fulfilled the good ethics of medicine. We thank you for the way the medical and health fraternity has expressed the value and care in the way they have exercised reverential ministry and care to their patients. And now they are proudly co-healers with God, the chief healer. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for the right to be happy. We pray that everybody born in our land, yeah, in our city and globally, may enjoy all their rights and be filled with happiness and joy and live with positive energy and spread happiness where they go. Lord, in your mercy. And Father, we thank you this day for young Luke Volsker who celebrates on this 21st day in March in this year, 20. 21, Luke, who celebrates his 21st birthday. We pray for him and his mom, Glenda, and the family as they prayerfully focus on this moment and the way they will choose and are able to celebrate it this day. And as we remember a family member, we also thank you for the ministry and the time in our midst of Verena and Alan Rogers. We thank you for their contribution to our sense of being a family that is yours, Father, a family of kindness and of care. We thank you for their respective ministries as lay ministers on the Cathedral Council as regular and committed members of the Friends of the Cathedral. And in all the ways that they were involved in the economy of our city, and through that how they have contributed to the well-being of families. But Lord, it is now a time of fun recall for the road traveled, and as we anticipate our farewell from them, we pray for traveling mercies, and may the purpose of the journey of being reunited with their loved ones, the wholeness of their family, may that memory be the sustaining one that enables us to say goodbye and yet to appreciate the resumption of familial ties for Verena and Alan. And so we pray for each one of us, for our loved ones and our family, wherever they may find themselves at this time. We pray this moment for Walter, as we also pray for all our loved ones, for Walter Leaning and Hilary, and others in this, at this moment that seek your healing presence and the comfort of your affirming Holy Spirit in their lives. These things we pray and ask for in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Friends, I ask the wardens to uh, please come forward, as you would have heard uh, in the sermon and also in the prayers that today we say goodbye 
so Verena and Alan Rogers. They returned to Yorkshire. I think they were fearful they were losing that Yorkshire accent. So they're going for a refresher. And I pray that this will not be that as you go and as the distance increases, the awareness of you, uh, Alan, and of you, Verena, that there will be a time again, somehow or other, where we will enjoy your presence. Friends, I know we struggle, I, I struggle to listen to the sermon, and it's, you know, we need visuals. And so a person has offered to have monitors installed on our pillars uh, to enable visuality, recognizing that for a long time that this will probably be the order of the day. Uh, there, uh, there will be less uh, kind of visual sermons. Next Sunday it will be the, the last of this uh, virtual uh, pulpit sharing. It will be the very reverend Lucinda Laird of the American Episcopal uh, Cathedral in Paris. And then we resume with myself. Uh, I see Mr. So let me know what you think of the monitor idea. We've flighted the idea at uh, council, but also it's important that you give your feedback on that. We invite um, Arthur to come forward and then also Verena and Alan, if you could please step forward. Good morning, friends. Um, it is indeed a sad uh, occasion, but also a joyful one to be saying goodbye to uh, Verena, Mary, and Alan Rogers. Well, it's only two of them, but we sometimes called her Mary, and then she became Verena in the last couple of years. They've been here since the 70s, I believe, and I've, I've, I wasn't around at that time. And I believe your children grew up in the church, so have you grown up in, in the cathedral. You've been with, uh, in the cathedral through all its seasons, its strifes, its joy. And then the others before me who, will, who have expressed this to you already, and I'm sure there's been a few parties. You've been very active in the cathedral. As Father Michael said, lay ministers, you participated in the hospitality, the friends, and you've tackled and completed many of the projects uh, in the cathedral, and we say thank you very much for that. Um, yes, so on behalf of the congregation, all the parishioners, the dean, the deans have been before, all the clergy that's been here before, that you've contributed to their lives and to our lives. So on behalf of the wardens and the cathedral council, we wish you all the best, safe travels, and may you settle in well. Um, here's a small token of, of our appreciation. Here's the card. And this is Thank you. Father Michael's book. And of course, you know, it's called Love and Lament, and may there be much, much love and less <laughs> lament. <laughs> Absolutely. And this is a small gift Thank you very much. Of, of our appreciation. And um, so as you use the gift, May it be gentle on your cheeks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Spiritual homes are something special. It's part of your being. And St. George's will remain part of our being. Thank you very much. As typifies his Yorkshire character, our brother has been one of few words, but pertinent and to the point. 
So friends, at this moment, I do invite you to stand. And so may the peace of the risen Lord be with you always. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. For us it becomes the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruits of the vine and work of human hands. For us it becomes the cup of salvation. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and indeed our duty and joy. Lord and Heavenly Father, God Almighty and Eternal, always and everywhere to give thanks to Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. And today we give you thanks because Jesus has promised that those who believe in him, though they die, shall live. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we acclaim you and declare the greatness of your glory. We praise you now and forever, saying, 
holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Siveba wa genkpana waku kristu minkosi yetu. Gaya mke alambule alambonga ya siwe nikilayo. Utume alamoya wako o mingwele. Pezu kwetu na pezu kwezi zipo. Sesonke ni waini. Kuno kuze zibe gumzimba. Nega zilake kuti. Wati nkobu suka avu ni nkelu wangabu. Watabata isonka. Waza kubabu lele kuwe wasipakeza. Wabanika bafundi bake ya siti. Tabata ni nitle. Logunzi mawamu ni kalelu wa nina. Oku kwenzele ni uku dikumbulu. Kananjalo ewe kwe sitlo sangu kutla watabata indebe. Waza kubabulele kuwe wabanika yesiti. Selani kuyanonke. Kuba edeligazi la mnumopisho omcha alipalalela nina na baninzi ukuze. Izono zikolelwe kama kwesho onke enisi kuba nisela kuyo oku kwenzele ni. Uku di kumbula. And so we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Heile gefaarde meriri gave se ti aan vir ons i mense di een volmaakter offer Christus ons a jere. Se opstanding in die dode en se opvaart na die jimmelse heerlijkheid, genadige Heere. Neem ons en hom aan, al is ons onwaardig, so dat ons wat deelneem aan die lichaam en bloed van die Seen nou in die eeuwen in mag wees met alle geloofigers. Vader Geer, dat die weil ons waag op die wederkomst en Christus ons verlosser. In die heerlijkheid en triom van sê, Koninkrijk ons dageliks mag toeneem in gelijkvormigheid en sê beeld, met wie en in wie en dier wie en die kracht van die heilige geest, alle eer en heerlijkheid en u gegeen word, almachtige vader, dier die hele gemeenskap op aarde en in die jimmel, dier die eeuwen, nou en verewig. En so as Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. And deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break is not a sharing of the body of Christ. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. And so draw near and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Feel and him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Behold who we are. And so I invite those at the receiving end of this live stream to join me in the act 
or to join us in this act of spiritual communion as we collectively pray the Anima Christi, soul of Christ, sanctify me, body of Christ, save me, blood of Christ, refresh me, water from the side of Christ, wash me, passion of Christ, strengthen me, O oh, good Jesus, hear me, within your wounds, hide me, let me never be separated from you. From the malicious enemy, defend me. In the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to you. And with your saints, I may praise you forever and ever. Amen.
O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for God is gracious. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world. To praise and glory. God bless our world. Guard our children, guide our leaders, and give us peace. For Jesus Christ's sake, amen. May Christ our Lord give you the grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. We stand. Beloved, the Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord.